All right, I'm going to throw, oh, by the way, it's Ripley. Welcome back. We're in chapter 11. This is the last day. Woohoo! Um, hope you've had a good time. Kind of in summation, I'm really interested in getting feedback from you. Hopefully you've been giving it to me um, all think long, but I'm really interested in feedback about how well this flipping the classroom worked with you guys. Um, you know, you hopefully it probably took you a little while to get used to it, whether you liked it or didn't like it in the beginning, that may be different now. So like I said, I, I'm really interested in, in hearing what you guys have to say about it, thinking if it's a good idea. I'm really, to be honest with you, I used you as a beta test for the class because I wanted to know, um, you know, you guys are basically the population, <laughs> a sample of the population that I wanted to use for my academy classes as well. So please be be um, as blunt as you need to be, be as honest as you need to be, just be constructive, not Ruby, you suck, you're terrible. So that's it. I'm gonna present you guys with a problem. Think about this. Let's say that I've got a school, all right, and there are a thousand kids in it. And we're gonna have a thousand kids. And this is a it's a regular city school, and they publish something. And they claim, let's they claim that their attendance or their enrollment at the school is consistent with the ethnicity of the the city that it's located in. Okay? So let's say, for example, that the city that they live in is 25% Hispanic. Hispanic. Um, it's 40% white. Caucasian, I'm going to put white, sorry, not politically correct, but it is what it is. It's 15% Asian, Asian, and it is 20% black. 20% black. For those of you that are others, I uh, don't mean to disrespect. Okay? Keep it simple. Now, think about this. I got a school of a thousand. How can I test this? Think about what we've done so far. Can I do paired data? What would I pair? Would I have to do pairwise across? You know what I mean? I mean, if think about it this way. If it, if it, in a school of a thousand, exactly 25% Hispanic would imply that I need 25, or excuse me, 250 Hispanics in the school, 400 white people in, or white kids in the school, 150 uh, Asians and, and 200 blacks. But clearly no school is going to play out like that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to introduce something called a chi-squared chi-square goodness of fit and it's such a it's so it's really easy to work with goodness of fit and it's actually pretty fun it's pretty cool so chi-square goodness of fit procedure and I'm gonna actually do this one with an example we'll work through the example together and uh, then we'll be done with the section now let's say that I go to this school all right and I'm gonna have Hispanics I'm gonna have white I'm gonna have eight I can give myself a little more room can I there's only four of these guys all right, I'm going to have, sorry about that, I'm going to have Hispanics, I'm going to have whites, I'm going to have Asians, I'm going to have blacks, and then what I'm going to have here, this is our race, and this is our frequency, okay? And let's say that I just go through the school, and I start tallying, all right? So let's see, um, in my school I've got 200 Hispanics, I've got 415 whites, I've got 175 Asians, and I've got 210 blacks. Now you may say, okay, well 200 Hispanics clearly is off, but again, hopefully in the back of your head you're thinking, well, how far off? It's an under, it, it's definitely undervalued, right? The frequency is too small compared to the claim. 415 is too big, 175 is too big, and 210 is too big. It's as though these races gobbled up the extra 50, which is, I mean, theoretically exactly what they did. Um, now, the question is, how can I test this kind of all at once? And it's actually really simple. It's very cool. It's a simple statistic called chi-squared, which we've used before. Remember when we did confidence intervals around standard deviations and variances? And if you remember, remember how this guy worked? It was S squared and N minus 1 and and all that good stuff. Well, we're not going to deal with that on this. This is a different chi-squared value. And all that it is, is it is the sum of the observed minus the expected, and we square it, and we divide it by the expected. All right, so O equals observed, observed, and E equals expected. And you may ask, well, Ripley, what, what do you mean by expected? Well, expected. Well, check it out. 
it's real simple to figure out. I'll do this one in blue. Um, if I could actually add a little column here. The expected values of this are, well, if it's 25% Hispanic and I've got 1,000 kids in the school, then 250 is the expected value that you would have, right? 40% white, there'd be 400. 15% um, Asian, there'd be 150, and then 200 black. So these are the expected values. Now, just like we did before, we're actually going to use a chi-squared table, but I'll show you how that works here in just a sec. Let's talk about the, ex about the assumptions, just like always. So the assumptions are, um, one, always, randomly selected. All right, so we've got, we, we've got these values which are randomly selected. Now, in this case, that's a little weird, all right? We're not actually taking a simple random sample. Think of it this way. What we're doing is the entire school is a school selected at random. And then we took all of the values and we did the demographics on that. So we got to fudge that just a little bit, okay? All right, number two is the data consists of frequencies. Data consists of frequencies. And by frequencies, that just means these guys. Okay, whoops, frequencies. They're these guys. So we're not going to write them as proportions. We're not going to write them as probabilities. Okay, then last but not least, and probably the most important, is um, each cell is at least, at least five. All right, now you may say that feels very random. Each of, excuse me, each of the expected, each, sorry, I forgot to put expected, each expected cell is at least five. The problem is if, if they're not at least five, then really very, very strange things can happen. Because if you think about it this way, in this case, this, this right here is, I mean, think about it, it's 80% of this. Let's say that this was a one or a two, let's make it a one, and this were 10, all right? Think about what that would be. This would be a thousand percent of what this would be. So if the numbers are less than five, then the, you get these wild swings in variations, all right? Now, the only other thing that you need, and this is the coolest part, other than the chart, the goodness, or the chi-squared chart, is you need to know what the, the degrees of freedom are, since uh, chi-squared always deals with degrees of freedom, and it's simply the number of categories number of categories. In this case, that happens to be the races. Categories, or E's, sorry guys, it's getting a little late, minus one. All right, standard issue. Uh, I think your book refers to this guy right here as K. Uh, I'm not sure. All right, now, watch how this works. All I'm going to do is, I'm going to rewrite my table. So I'm going to go 200, 400, 415, 